Hi, and welcome to this edition of Beach Time. Now, today we're coming to you from the Kaleidoscope Festival, which is right here on the campus of Cal State Long Beach. Now, the festival is not only for the friends and family of the students here, but also for the community. Let's go see what we can find. Now I'm here with Lee Vale, who has actually organized Kaleidoscope for many, many years. And Lee, thank you for being here, first of all. We appreciate everything that you've done. And tell us exactly what is your role. I am the director of Kaleidoscope, so my job is to make sure that we hire a really good assistant, uh, the coordinator, and that this year is John David Manjaris. Um, I work with Doug Robinson and Paula Gleason in Student Services and Dave Sanfilippo, who is the director of Disabled Student Services. And we get together you know, one week after Kaleidoscope ends and start planning next year's Kaleidoscope. Um, and working with the various colleges and departments and student organizations, associated students, the community, all the groups that participate so that we can make this the best event possible. What exactly can people expect when they come to Kaleidoscope? A lot of fun, a lot of food, a lot of balloons. <laughs> It's just a great day to, to wander around the campus, to get to see it in a festive atmosphere. There are booths that give them information on specific programs related to science or health and human services or music, a lot of entertainment going on. Our own uh, jazz combos from the music department are performing on the bookstore stage. And there are student groups, bands that have organized that are getting a chance to perform live so they get to see that kind of activity. The Associated Students has put on a carnival for children and the student organizations have put their, their names in a little lottery to find out who's going to run each of those carnival booths. So you get to see that college isn't just going to classrooms and learning, which is certainly probably the most important part of college, but it's also developing that sense of service to the community and enjoyment and camaraderie. Where did the name Kaleidoscope come from? We actually had a contest. Uh, you know, we started planning Kaleidoscope, the first one, in 1984. And we had to decide what we were going to do and we had to, what we were going to call this festival. And uh, so we had a contest. We ran it through the 49er shops, you know, the, the 49er newspapers. Students entered the competition, entered in their suggestions, and the committee poured over all the suggestions that came in. And it was a woman um, who was in her middle 40s, I think, you know, one of the returning students who had coined the phrase Kaleidoscope. And uh, we thought we liked that best because it reflects that diversity that makes this campus up. So. Great. I think it's a fitting name. Yes, it is. <laughs> and why is it always the last Saturday in April? Scheduling. Okay. Um, if you go into, our, as I said, our first one was May 3rd. If you, if you move it to May, for example, next week, now we're only two weeks away until final exams which is a little close for students who have to get ready for all of that fun. If you go a little bit sooner, in the middle of April, then, you know, it depends on where spring break falls. Well, we appreciate everything, and thank you so much, and good luck today. Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you. I'm here with John David Majaris, and you are an official coordinator of Kaleidoscope. What is involved in that job? Well, what we have to do is basically put on the logistics as well as get all the applications in, um, set the booths, uh, call the vendors, uh, we worked with several different uh, companies like ANZA and SoCal Sanitation to get our sinks and canopies out here today. Um, and then just putting together uh, the people and bringing them on the campus. Okay, now we see you passing out a lot of drinks and ice. What's going on there? Because sure. you've been doing that a long time. Yeah, well actually what it was was uh, the 40, uh the 49er shops here on campus um, is one of our sponsors for Kaleidoscope and what they were able to do for all of the organizations that are going to be doing uh, fundraisers using food this, this year, uh, they provided them with free Coke product. What are some of the amazing things that people can expect when they come to Kaleidoscope? There's, there's a lot of stuff. There's definitely a day's worth of events going on. We have the Medieval Renaissance, which are going to have dog races, catapults. We have our Children's Day area, which is going to have live entertainment throughout the day, as well as several different organizations from different schools for, the, for children, just real aimed towards children entertainment. And then you can't miss the international uh, area, which is going to be all of our food and all the different tastes from around the world. Uh, we have the bookstore stage and the uh, program council stage, which has live entertainment throughout the day again, and then the push cart races, which is a really big draw. And then you can't miss all the student organizations over in Greek Row and the Engineering Day and Health Science Fair going on today. Now, how did you get involved? I was actually, um, I've been here since 2000, yes, a very long time. Um, and I was a participant for the past three years. I was working with Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia, which is the fraternity here on music fraternity here on campus, as well as College of the Arts. And we've had booths here in the past. And then um, I was working in the student services, who was also a sponsor of the event. And I just saw the position open, and I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. I mean, I've been here for so long. Why not help out the Long Beach State, right? Yeah. Well, is this your first time actually in this position? This is my first year running, uh, being co coordinator of the position, yeah. All right. Well, you're doing a great job. Thank you very much. What exactly is happening? We're playing butts up to support the women's club soccer team. <laughs> Paying a dollar to hit us as hard as you want. 
I don't know about some of these big men. That little girl doesn't look like she's going to do much damage, but there's some people no, out here. No, no. We've had, like, a really big group that just came, and some of the people played soccer, like, their entire lives, and they kind of hurt a lot. Are you guys going home with bruises? Um, probably. <laughs> but money's better than bruises, I guess. Right. We'll talk about your club. Um, well, we're the women's club soccer team. I think we've been established since uh, 1980s. And uh, our season starts from the beginning of September till probably the mid of, of November. We play against other collegiate club teams, uh, USC, Santa Barbara, UCLA. So we're a very competitive team. So it's the same as a D1, except we don't get scholarships, but we're the same as competitive as them. Okay, and how about the practice schedule? Um, this year we did a Monday, Wednesday from 3.15 to 5. So you guys are pretty serious. Yeah, we're pretty serious. So anybody who's serious out there, come and call us because we're waiting for you guys. Well, I think we're going we're gonna to swing back around and play. What's this called? Butts Up. We're going to play Butts Up in a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Townsend and Springen. Okay. What organization are you guys from? Uh, senior University, Ollie. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. And how long have you been coming out to Kaleidoscope? Oh, this is our third performance. We're part of the Society for Creative Anachronism, so it's a medieval group, a history group. Uh, there's a local chapter on campus. Um, it's called the Noe College. And so we're just kind of displaying what our wares and tears are. Now, what are some of the, like, for instance, what is this right here? Uh, this is what B is a Spangen home, mostly from about the 900s to 1100s. Uh, this is about the same period of time. This is a Norman Hellman, it would be a lot bit later period, 14th century, 15th century. Um, most of this is the Norman breastplate, so it would be like the real, when most people see the kind of the armor and the chivalry, this is what they would think of. This is a lot earlier period. So that would be a breastplate. These are elbows and forearm protection. Neck protection, hand protection, shoulder protection, lower leg protection. Um, this is a medieval recreation group. Um, we do all aspects of the Middle Ages, from textiles to brewing to costume making. Um, a lot of you're going to see here is a lot of demonstration fighting. Um, this is an actual suit of armor that's stainless, stainless, and a bunch of leather mixed in. It's period. It's heavy. Um, when we we do fighting, but it's not for um, it's not acting. It's not like you see at a ren fair where it's for a crowd. This is more like a martial art than anything else. Um, the weapons we fight with are all wood. Let me show you one. Okay. So it's solid wood. It's um, a type of wood called rattan. We tape it so that you don't get um, pieces into your helmet, and it's full contact um, as hard as you can hit somebody. So the, tem the demonstration fighting you're going to see today is full impact fighting. <laughs> that's, that's real stuff. I see some splinters on there too. So. Uh, you'll see all the marks. That that's from hitting people. <laughs> so my weapons have been around the block a few times. Do they hit you in the head at all, or just yep. the body? Full body. So you'll see I'm completely armored all the way around. Now, how long do you train for something like this? Um, I've been fighting since 1985. Um, Angus, one of my new guys, he's only been fighting about three months. So what we do is we do a lot of research and study, and we recreate the best time of those periods. So, like, there's no plague, but we do study, you know, the fine arts of, of healing. We'll study all the other good stuff, but as far as all the proper stuff or the good stuff of the Middle Ages, this is what we do. So, yeah, you just can't go out to Walmart and get the helmet. No, I wouldn't think so. I haven't seen that at Walmart. <laughs> so, they're, they're fun to make. It's uh, one of the really things that we enjoy about this game is we do the true tradition of master student kind of teaching. So as we learn, we then turn around and teach others. So I do metal working, I do leather working, I fight, I do sewing, you know, because in my, my period of time, I'm about from the 900s, you know, if you're out on campaign, there's not someone out there sewing for you. So you got to learn how to mend your own garb, you got to learn how to, you know, make your own uh, armor and, and everything else. And then over on the far side, on the other side of the tree, we have uh, what we call the siege weapons or artillery. So we have a ballista and we also have a, a miniature catapult. So we'll be shooting those off here in, in a little bit.
So for the most part, again, being a game of honor, we want to, uh, and that's what we really strive, honor and chivalry. Um, you know, you, you fight in an honorable way. That means if someone, you know, you take the leg, you can either stay up one advantage, which is fine, or you can drop to your own legs or, you know, you both get legs. It's like when I fight, I try, if someone takes their legs, I'll try to take mine because it's less places I have to protect. You know, I don't have to think as much. But, you know, it's up to you. So one will be fighting more with what's known as a heater. So the gentleman off to the left right now is fighting with a heater. The other one's fighting with a center grip the oval shield. Just different styles. They all would have been used throughout a period of time. I'm here with Adrian from the Blast organization. And first of all, talk a little bit about your organization and the kids that you brought here. Well, basically, uh, these are kids from uh, Washington Middle School as well as from North Point Apartment Complex. And so in Paramount County, Wood, we're an uh, after-school program. We also have mentors for the kids from college students, actually from um, Cal State Long Beach. Uh, we also have Operation Read for kids who may have a dyslexia problem or who may not have that actual grade level, maybe a third grade, maybe even a kindergarten level. We actually have the programs to help them read better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when they come out here to Kaleidoscope, what are some of the things they like to do? Well, of course, the main thing is go-karting. It's a great thing you're doing for the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, first of all, tell me the name of your team. Uh, our team is Student Association La Raza. La Raza Student Association. Okay. Now... How long are you guys practicing before you come out here to this well, we're race? We're actually practicing a couple of days. Um, they gave us the material to construct the car, and every organization, every team construct their own car. We decided to pick up Chapulín, Colorado. It's a Mexican TV show. It signals a red grasshopper. It's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> How long did it take to put the car together? Oh, well, it took like a week. It took like a week to put it all together. We always had to um, do little screws. The brake was a hard issue, but we got it all together. Okay, but everybody participated on the team? Definitely, everybody, and it was very fun. Okay, now what are some of the things that go into picking up speed and, and allowing you to win a race like this? Well, really it's up to the pusher. The driver just has to drive, and the pusher just has to keep pushing hard. And there was obstacles in this race, so that really determined who won. Okay, now I understand you guys didn't win the speed, but which no. category did you win? We won the most spirited, so... <laughs> All right, well, you guys are definitely spirited. Thank All right. you. Thank you very much. You have a good day. Do you have a lot of kids coming over here and enjoying the day? How does it work? We've had people stop by and ask us about Girl Scouts because Campus Scouts works exclusively with Girl Scouts in the community. And what are some of the things that Campus Scouts do with the Long Beach community Girl Scouts? We do pretty much whatever we can to help the Girl Scouts. We have an adopted troop that we work with in kind of a mentoring ship program. And then if anybody else in the Girl Scout Council wants our help, we do whatever we can with that. Campus tours and things like that. Uh, let's see, how about, well, this one's going to match my shirt, I think, the blue. And, yep, blue and white, perfect. Campus Scouts is specifically for university, you know, uh, folks, and it's co-ed. Oh, is it? Now, is there a lot of? 18, you can be co-ed. We haven't attracted a lot of guys yet. It's sort of a, you know, I don't think they realize. You know, it would be a great way to, you know, develop some healthy relationships with young women. Well, absolutely. And then also we met a, a gentleman earlier who told us he knew how to sew and cook. So, yeah. You can learn a lot of skills. That's absolutely. helpful. Absolutely. Okay, well, now, now I have go. something. Now I have something pretty blowing around. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, what's the name of your band? Half Past Two. And what's your name? Tara. And what about everybody in the group? Um, then there's Max, Ian, Matt, Annette, uh, David, and Patrick. There's a lot of people in my band. Okay, very cool. It sounded like it was ska. Did I get that right? Yeah, it's a ska band. That's why there's so many of us in there. And how long have you guys been together? Um, collectively, I think all of us have been together with everybody for over a year now. And yeah. then how often do you practice? Uh, we practice once a week, and then they also have individual practices, like every now and then during the week. So, 
Yeah. How long have you been preparing for Kaleidoscope? This is uh, ever since we found out, which was like two or three weeks ago. We were really excited about it too. So we made the final four, and here we are. I hope we win. All right. Well, I know you're excited. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, I love that guy. Oh. All right, the Long Beach State ice hockey team. What do you guys have going on over at this table? We uh, we have a shooting gallery for uh, you know young kids to come up here and take some shots on our superstar goalie over here. Okay. If you can see him with the camera. Yeah, so actually, yeah, and then it's, it's it's yeah he's an all star on our team. He is the goalie. an all star. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, hey, what do they get when they make it in that hole there? Uh, not much. Just a, a, a good, you know, cheer. They get a good, and, can, uh, can you give us an example? Woo! Go Beach! Yeah! Like that. Okay, <laughs> you know? Um, no, we're just kind of displaying our uh, information and, you know, selling T-shirts, fundraising, that type of thing. All right, well, tell us a little about the ice hockey team. Uh, we've been around at the school here for about 10 years, uh, competing in the American Collegiate Ho Hockey Association, uh, the men's division two. Uh, play roughly 33 games, 34 games per season, and um, draw roughly 400, 500 fans a game. So it makes for a good event. What's your position? Uh, president. And a player. I was a player. So. What position did you play as a player? Forward. 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 And we got a superstar defenseman over here, too. Okay, superstar. So. All right. What position did you play? Defense. Okay, just all around defense. That's all around defense. Okay. This is Dawn here with Long Beach State TV. <laughs> Taking her first slap shot. Let's see what she got, Dawn. She shoots. She scores. Long Beach goal. Is that a goal? Uh, you scored. All right. I stole your microphone. Sorry. All right. Thank you. <laughs> What are some of the cool booths you saw or food you ate or anything? Well, i only been to two booths, and that was the criminal justice booth, where you can learn about identity theft, or where you can help children at the booth up there. I really didn't get their name, but I rode a tricycle, and that was cool. Now, are you enjoying yourself out here? I'm having a great time. It is a little warm, but there's a lot of fun stuff to it see. It is, and I haven't seen everything, and I'm on my way to see everything. Well, make sure you get some of those tamales because we hear great things about them. Really? Okay. Well, make sure you check out the Criminal Justice Union because they're great. There they are over there. Right. There they are. Criminal Justice Unit. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have All a great right. time. Get your tamales a dollar fifty. A dollar fifty. We got chicken. We got pork. Cheese. Get it. We got it. A dollar fifty. Tamales, tamales, tamales. Yeah. yeah. How's the food? The food's good. The tamales are really good. Yeah. <laughs> what else did you guys have? We got tamales and uh, tacos. Carne asada. Really good? Yeah, they're really good. Wow, this is really good. It's right over there. It was only seven bucks. It's really good. What are, you, what are you eating here? I'm having pineapple tamale and chicken tamale from that great uh, place right there. Okay, well, it looks good, isn't it? It's excellent. Mm -hmm. Never had one before. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't either. I'm going to have to try one. talk about your group. Okay, we're Beach Bellies Belly Dancing Club, and it's a brand new club that I just formed this semester. And pretty much all these ladies that came in were beginner belly dancers, and now they're amazing. So we belly dance, we learn a bit about the culture behind the dance, and we have a lot of fun. And it's fun and a great workout and a great social event, too. Now, how, if somebody wants to join, how do they find you? Well, they can come by today and pick up a flyer and sign up on our sign-in sheet so that they can be in our email list and get more information that way. Otherwise, at the week of welcome, starting next semester, then there'll be more information and an opportunity to sign up for the club at that point, too. 
Great. Thank you so much. Sure. You guys look great out here. Thanks. Have a great day. at this table here? Uh, we are the actual the paintball team and the paintball club. We actually just started it last November and we just went and won the national championships. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be on Fox Sportsnet all summer long. Oh, wow. Yeah, How yeah. Cool yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've been playing professionally now for the last two years and then a couple of friends and I were like, hey, we should start a team and a club here on campus. And so we did. And uh, so now we have the competitive team and we also have the club and we go down to Camp Pendleton once a month, take everyone and anyone out who wants to go and just get everyone involved in paintball and paintball involved in school, so. <laughs> Is there another a bullet in there? Yeah. I think I killed him. Do, I think I killed like, him. Do you not like our jerseys? <laughs> I mean, we, the, the yellow targets work too. Oh, the targets. <laughs> I, I think there's, hey, I think there's one more. I think there's one more. If you don't have any of your own equipment, doesn't matter. They have it all for you. If you do have your own equipment, it's a little bit cheaper and you can come on out and we'll supply everything. Get you onto the field, get you air, the paintballs that you actually shoot, and actually give you hot dogs, barbecue, drinks, everything that you guys need for the whole day. Very cool. Sounds like a good day for me. Yeah, no, totally. It is. <laughs> now, what if you have no experience doing this? Not is it all, difficult? Not at all. We have guys in the club that have been playing for 11 years, and we have guys that don't even know how to put the mask on. Absolutely, everyone is invited, administrators, students, the hockey team, the frats, anyone and everyone is invited to come. If you have no experience, we're there to help. Okay, yeah. well, sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're the Cal State Long Beach Alumni Association booth. Okay, and what are you guys featuring here? Well, what we're featuring is in this booth we have old yearbooks um, from when the university first started. The earliest one that we have in, as part of this collection is 1950, um, although the, the university started in 49. And so our, we like our alum to come by and browse the yearbooks and see if they can find their actual year that they graduated. I bet the outfits are really interesting if you go back to 1950, 1955 in the yearbook. Oh my gosh, yes. It's fun to actually see how people dressed back then and <laughs> the hairstyles. and um, It really tells a history, um, you know, looking through the old books. It's kind of fun. And then we have the bricks here that alumni purchase also. So every year we're at the same place. The alumni tent is always in the Brick Plaza. So who actually has the 1949 yearbook, or was there not one? You know, I don't know if they published one, because if you can see, the, the 1951 is a real slim book. Oh, wow. I'm not sure if because 49 was the first year, if they didn't have one, or if we just don't have it as part of this collection. But... Um, it's fun to look back and see how much the yearbooks have changed. You know, they started out with just a paper publication, and then, like, we have 1952 kind of has a fuzzy, soft cover. Um, and, and again, you can see, you know, the hairstyles from the periods. <laughs> Most of the yearbooks are black and white. They're still black and white with some color photographs, but even surfing, you know, you can see how popular. <laughs> and here, of course, here's football, the 49ers. That was that look at the outfit. Course. Right, yes, yes. <laughs> it looks like Woodstock. Ball. It does, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming.
So now this is Cal State Long Beach's Mobile Science Museum, and tell us exactly what's going on here. What do you have? Well, the Mobile Science Museum is a collection of different sciences uh, in very simple exhibit terms. We have everything from marine biology to physics to chemistry and a little bit of everything in between. So we may have a group of fossils. We have a dinosaur bone that is at least 70 million years old. We have some physics exhibits. We have a scat wheel. We have magnets, magnetic things. We have solar panels. We have gravity vortex, which is just a very common children's toy. But it shows the concept of gravity pulling the penny down, centrifugal force keeping the penny out, and conservation of momentum as it accelerates and goes faster and faster as it gets down in the well. Hold those two ends. Now, can you pull them apart easily? There's really no attraction, is there? If I turn on the switch, now when you try to pull it apart, there's 150 Whoa. pounds of force holding it together. Okay, hold on to it. Switch off, and it comes apart easily. So this simple electromagnet using 1D battery will hold the two pieces together with 150 pounds of force. It's a pretty dramatic illustration of the force of magnetism. <laughs> well, we had a full day of fun, excitement, and entertainment. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the Kaleidoscope Festival here at Cal State Long Beach, and we'll see you next time on Beach Time.